Hi, Cole here from Storytelling with Data T. Now, when we teach about visualizing and communicating with data, we often draw a distinction between two parts of the process. The exploratory, the exploration of the data when we're analyzing it and maybe aggregating it or disaggregating it, combining it in different ways to try to figure out What's going on here that's interesting that someone else might care about? Counter that with the explanatory part of the process. And that is where we've identified something specific that we want to communicate to someone specific. Now, we spend most of our time teaching about how to do the latter part of that, the explanatory communications effectively. But it is not uncommon that someone asks me best practices for exploring data. So today, I'd like to share a book with you that I frequently recommend when someone asks about exploring data. Let me grab it from the shelf. The book is called Avoiding Data Pitfalls by Ben Jones. It was published in November 2019. Uh, so draw attention first to our subtitle at the top here, how to steer clear of common blunders when working with data and presenting analysis and visualization. Now, Ben has an interesting background. He's actually trained as a mechanical engineer at a variety of roles, spent a number of years at Tableau, uh, both as a director of outreach programs and then also as a technical evangelist. And then he left there and in 2018 started Data Literacy. Uh, so you can learn about Ben and his work at dataliteracy.com. Uh, I've also done a number of podcasts with Ben over the years. I'll make sure to link to those in the show notes. And actually one of those podcasts was about avoiding data pitfalls. The opportunity to sit down with Ben, it was Seattle in January 2020, so shortly after the book came out. Uh, you can click on the link to listen to that. I thought today we'd take a peek at the interior. I'll share some of my perceptions as we do so. So uh, I have a special copy that's actually signed, which is always fun. And content. Here. So chapter one actually sets out the seven types of pitfalls that really make up the majority of the book. So we see those listed here. Starts off with the epistemic errors. Uh, side note there, I remember reading this for the first time and thinking, Ben, I love how you write and it's so accessible. Then we start off with an error called epistemic that I actually have to read and think about to sound somewhat intelligible when pronouncing. But then I realized why it's called this, or at least one of the reasons that it's called this, which is one I can appreciate, uh, which is clearly a love of alliteration. <laughs> because we go from there into technical traps, mathematical miscues, statistical slip-ups, analytical aberrations, graphical gaps, and then finally, design dangers. And so each of the subsequent chapters lays out a given error and then goes into how to think about it. Uh, it includes a ton of illustrative examples. Actually, that is one of the things that I really appreciate about this book and Ben's writing in general. He has a number of other books uh, that I'd recommend checking out as well. But the pitfalls are not put forth as always do this, never do that, but rather here's a trap that I fell into and I wanna share with you <laughs> that process so that maybe you can identify when you are about to step in one and avoid it. Uh, which I appreciate. Let's see what else in the book. Let's just actually flip through some pages here. And as we get into chapter one, so this is where Ben outlines the different types of pitfalls, right? So here are epistemic errors. So for example, assuming that the data we're using is a perfect reflection of reality, forming conclusions about the future based on historical data only, seeking to use data to verify a previously held belief rather than test it and see whether it's actually false. 
And so you can flip through and get this same sort of detail and examples for each of the errors. And actually, this is a book that I would recommend reading once cover to cover. Uh, and I'd recommend it to both people who are working with data regularly, uh, because I think it's a great reminder of things that we may not always have top of mind when we're working with data, but should make sure that we are being aware of and watching out for. And then I would especially recommend it to people who don't have uh, deep technical know-how when it comes to working with data to make sure you're aware of some of these potential traps or pitfalls and how to identify them and avoid them, make your work stronger and more reliable. Let me just flip through here. I want to give you just a couple of peeks into uh, the style and the way that things are written. So I'm in pitfall one here. Uh, avoiding the swan pitfall and the god pitfall. I'm actually not going to tell you about what either of those are because I think that's a fun teaser to hopefully make you want to read more. Uh, how do we avoid falling into these two epistemic pitfalls? Let's start by considering the process that gets us into trouble. Here's the way that process and our thinking often goes. Basic question followed by data analysis leads to singular statement, unaware of the inductive leap. Finally, belief in a universal statement. He goes on to say, instead, I propose we go about things like this. Start with a basic question, do the data analysis, have our singular statement, but then falsifiable universal statement hypothesis followed by an honest attempt to disprove it. So he goes through a number of examples and what they look like with each of those different framings. Uh, let's see, there are a number of, I'll just kind of flip through examples throughout. And these are, you know, some are pulled from uh, things that are out there, I'm gonna do this backwards, uh, some from Ben's direct experience. Uh, there's a good anecdote about uh, bicycles in Fremont, which is someone who uh, has spent a lot of time in Seattle, having grown up and gone to school there. I appreciate the local references. Uh, I wanna read you a short segment just so you can get a sense of the writing style. I'm in pitfall number three, which is mathematical miscues. And we're talking about the issue of mismatched units. For those of my dear readers who aren't engineers or scientists, you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself, phew, I sure am glad I don't have to worry about this problem. After all, I don't design Mars orbiters or rovers or anything like that. First, Let's all acknowledge how cool it would be to design Mars orbiters and rovers and literally everything like that. Second, not so fast, you have to consider units of measure too. You know it's true. Ever put a tablespoon of salt into a dish instead of the teaspoon the recipe calls for? Me too, yuck. Here are 10 different ways I've fallen to the very bottom of this nasty pitfall in a variety of contexts, including business contexts. So again, it's that approachable, Here's where I took a misstep. I'm going to share it with you so that you hopefully can learn from it and navigate more smoothly. And so he goes through 10 very specific issues, in this case, with mismatched units and what that led to. Hmm. Uh, there is uh, some content here on statistics. Uh, so some of the basic things like standard deviation, sample size, and they're approached in very pragmatic ways. Uh, does not read like a textbook at all, but rather you're really learning through example and seeing things done well or not well as a way to promote learning. All right, one more thing I want to flip to in the book is which is near the end. Uh, we're actually in chapter nine, I believe the conclusion, avoiding data pitfalls checklist. Uh, so he goes through each of the pitfalls that were introduced and now includes very specific things to watch out for that are based on the discussion and the examples that have been raised throughout the book. There is also a bonus pitfall that I am not going to reveal. I'll let you uh, take a look for yourself. You'd like to add avoiding data pitfalls to your library, you can click on the link that just appeared. And I would encourage you, if you're familiar with the book and have a perspective to share, please leave a comment with your thoughts. I hope you've enjoyed this format because I'm planning 
to do it again for at least a few more titles. And if there are additional specific titles you'd like to see, please let me know that in the comments as well. And with that, I'll say thank you very much for tuning in. I'll see you next time.